We continue our prayer this afternoon in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And so good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our church here, the Sacred Heart, as we welcome the mortal remains of Bridget Dempsey. We ask the Lord now to grant her eternal rest, to the lead to lead her to the place prepared for her in God's house. We're conscious of life well lived, and we are thankful for that in our Mass as we commend her soul to God. And as we welcome her mortal remains, our thoughts and prayers turn to her family as we welcome her husband, Michael, her children, Oliver, Lisa and Martin, her sister, Agnes, her grandchildren, Aidan, Jack, Emily and Sophia, her in-laws, nieces, nephews, extended family relations, devoted carers and many friends. Also joined by Father Liam, Merrigan, who knows the family so well over the years. There are many ways in which Bridget's life might be marked or remembered, but the family have brought along some symbols this afternoon, and I invite Martin and Aidan and Jack to bring forward a Scrabble rack. She had a great love of the game of Scrabble and of words, a St. Martin's magazine, which she loved, had great devotion to and loved to read, and a camera, her love of the natural world around her and the beauty of creation. So I invite those family members now to place our symbols on our altar rails. In addition to those symbols of life, we also have our Christian symbols. Bridget's life was guided by God's word. We're now going to place the book of the Gospels on our coffin. And as I do so, we say, in life, Bridget, cherish the gospel of Christ. May Christ greet her with the words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. And on the coffin we also have the crucifix, I suppose a reminder of the fragility, the brokenness of human life, but for the Christian a powerful symbol of Christ's resurrection. On the day she was baptised some 88 years ago, Bridget received that sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel in death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives us our sins, we pray now, asking the Lord to gather Bridget to himself. For our own faults and failings, we say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Bridget, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We'll be seated now to listen to God's word. And Anthony and Martin are going to offer us our readings. And between the readings, then, we'll have a psalm song. There is a season for everything, a time for every occupation under heaven, a time for giving birth, a time for dying, a time for planting, 
a time for uprooting what has been planted, a time for building, a time for tearing down, a time for sorrow, a time for joy, a time for mourning, a time for dancing, a time for making love, a time to refrain from love, a time for finding, a time for losing, a time for saving, a time for throwing away, a time for mending, a time for tearing, a time for keeping silent, a time for speaking, a time for conflict, and a time for peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, we may be certain after such a gift that he will not refuse us anything he can give. Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Jesus Christ? No. Not only died for us, he rose from the dead. And there, at God's right hand, he stands and pleads for us. Nothing, therefore, can come between us and the love of Christ, even if we are troubled or worried, being prosecuted, lacking food or clothes, or being threatened or even attacked. These are the trials through which we triumph, by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, nor any power or height or depth, nor any created thing can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand now for the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. And I'm going now to prepare a place for you. And after I've gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am you may be too. You know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We'll be seated a few moments. And so we come together this afternoon to pray in thanksgiving for the life of Bridget Dempsey from James's town. 
it's fair to say that Bridget, who was 88 years young, enjoyed a full and a fruitful life. Over the last five years, she battled dementia with both dignity and courage. She was given great care, support and attention by her family and her carers, and she died surrounded by them on Sunday. We now ask the Lord to lead Bridget to the place prepared for her in heaven, the place outlined in today's Gospel. May the Lord grant her eternal rest and peace. Bridget packed a lot into her years. She trained as a nurse in her native Dublin. She qualified as a secretary and typist shorthand. She worked for years in France as a nanny. Back home, worked again as a beautician. This all took place before the most significant junction on the journey. One night in the mid-1960s in the Metropole Hotel, met Michael as a result of a ladies' choice dance. The rest is history. <laughs> Married in 67, enjoyed a happy marriage, where over the years welcomed three children and her grandchildren. With Michael, she helped to create a happy, supportive home and devoted her life to her family and to her new career as a farmer, a little different from Drumcondra. This afternoon, we extend our deepest sympathies to her husband Michael, her children Oliver, Lisa and Martin, her grandchildren Aidan, Jack, Emily and Sophia. She's also mourned by her sister Agnes, by her in-laws, extended family, nieces and nephews, devoted carers and many friends. In talking with family over the days, they have many happy, lovely memories to draw on. Bridget was light-hearted, caring, positive, talented person. With Michael, she worked hard to provide for the family. In her limited free time, she loved time spent with family and her grandchildren, had a love of computers, a love of words, I'm sure helped by her love of Scrabble over 53 years with the neighbours each week. She loved languages, spoke French, had even learned some Hungarian. A full and fruitful life. This life was built on the foundations of great faith, a faith nourished in this church, a faith expressed in her love for Michael and the family, in her love for her friends and neighbours, in her great connection and appreciation of the natural world around her. Her prayers always brought her comfort. In recent years, even in the deepest throes of dementia, she never forgot her prayers. Today we thank God for all the different aspects of Bridget's life, but most of all for her faith. In celebrating her funeral mass, we thank God not just for Bridget's life, but also for the gift of resurrection that God gives and offers us. That's what brings us together when we face a death. The scriptures we have listened to offer consolation. We truly believe that Bridget is now with God and that if we keep on the path of faith, we too shall see her again when pain and suffering and separation and confusion are no more. Lord, guide Bridget gently home to the place and room you have prepared for her. Keep us on the path of faith that we may see her again. And as you grant her eternal rest, be of consolation to the family she leaves behind. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, 
let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. We pause a moment now in quiet prayer. And I invite you now to stand with me again. And I invite Maria to come forward. Maria is going to offer us now our prayer of the faithful. As we turn to the Lord, confident that he hears and responds to all our needs. For the sorrowing family, relatives and friends of Bridget, that they may find strength and consolation in their fate and in the love and support of the community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of all consolation, help us to comfort one another in our grief, finding light in time of darkness and fate in time of doubt. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends, that God may bring them into the light of his presence and give them a share in his glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the staff of Port Leash Hospital, Dr. McKegney and all the nurses and carers, particularly the nurses and carers who are present to comfort and support Bridget and her family in her final moments. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pause for a moment to make our own prayers for Bridget and the Dempsey family in the silence of our own hearts. Lord, hear us. God, our loving Father, we ask you to hear these prayers that we make in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to be seated again and Lisa is going to bring forward and someone whose name I've missed is going to bring forward our gifts of bread and wine.
And we pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church, and the prayer over our gifts. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Bridget, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the hosts of angels adore your majesty, and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, humbly we implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And together we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance which you elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, and all your people, and the entire people your Son has gained for you. Remember, Bridget, your servant, whom you've called today from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at the passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with, with him, him, and in him, him O God, God, Almighty Father, in the unity of God. the Holy Spirit, all Lord. glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. United as his children, we stand together now, and pray the words our Saviour left us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We pray for that peace in our hearts, in our homes and for eternal peace for Bridget this day. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the reception of communion, you're invited to come forward to the middle aisle and to return at the side aisles. Thank you.
And let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Bridget may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So in a couple of moments we will have our final blessing, and then invite Oliver to say a few words on behalf of the family. But just before that, just to say thank you for your prayer for attendance at Mass. After the blessing and prayers of accommodation, we'll be making our way to Kilinard. In these COVID times, please just remember just to keep that social distance. The family understand and appreciate you're not shaking hands and ask maybe that you help keeping us all safe outside the church and when we get to Kilinard too. And just before Oliver says a few, says a few words, just to offer our final blessing, as we say, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. First of all, I'd like to say thanks to the staff of Port Leash Hospital, Dr. McKegney, Tom Stack, and all the nurses who looked after Mammy. We'd like to especially thank the carers. Word cannot describe our gratitude for what the carers did for Mammy in the last year, tending to her basic needs, doing her hair, her makeup, playing cards, playing games, singing songs, bringing her for walks and for drives in the car, making her life as enjoyable as possible. They were absolute saints. Thanks to the lads who dug the grave, and thanks to everyone who gave us support in the last few days. We have great memories of Mammy. She was young at heart and always excited to discover new things. You could ask her about anything, and if she didn't know the answer, she would look it up in the encyclopedia. And if she couldn't find it in the, in the encyclopedia, she'd find the answer somewhere else. She was like Google for us before Google was invented. She loved taking photos, keeping records and taking notes. She'd have a diary that she'd have get a few years out of. She'd write in all the births, deaths and marriages of the people she knew and of famous people. She'd record who won elections and any other major events. She was like reeling in the ears before reeling in the ears was invented. She was happiest working outside with the animals or in the garden. When she got married first, there was no written record of calf births, so Mammy developed a system for writing them down and recording them, and this was a great start when the herd was later graded up to pedigree. Our early memories of Mammy were of her out milking and feeding the calves with Daddy, and our grandfather, Pop, and she did it up to very recently. Daddy and Mammy were involved in the Kildare Frisian Club, and the Leash Cow Testing Association. They won many trophies for the herd, and she used to particularly enjoy the social aspect of meeting up with the other members every year. It wasn't hard for her to find something new and fascinating that she wanted to learn about. One time she became interested in Egyptian history, the pyramids and the tombs, and she read many books about that, and in particular about Tutankhamun. Another time she subscribed to an astronomy magazine and we were fascinated to learn that the galaxies were moving away from each other faster than the speed of light. In the early years of their marriage, Mammy and Daddy took part in lots of question times and won a few prizes along the way. Mammy wouldn't let us say a bad word about anyone. She'd say, if you can't say something good, say nothing at all. She had some nice sayings that we'll always remember. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And it doesn't matter about winning, it's taking part that matters. Her favourite song was, You got to accentuate the positive, <laughs> eliminate the negative. If you haven't heard it, you can look it up on YouTube. Another time, herself and Daddy got very interested in genealogy. And they spent a couple of years working on our family tree, and they got great sport out of that. She was in the Scrabble group for 52 years. There were five women in the group, and every five weeks, it was at our house. The best thing we liked about it was that there were lots of cakes and biscuits left over for our lunch at school the next day. 
The best present she ever got us was Lego. Ourselves and our cousins used to get hours of pleasure out of it on Sundays when they came to visit. She loved languages. She was fluent in French, and in later years she was trying to learn Arabic and Hungarian. She did a computer course in 1998, and she did the ECDL course shortly after. She had great sport down through the years, looking up stuff on the internet and keeping in contact with friends and family. Mammy was devoted to Daddy. She always was happy to row in and get involved with any new project that Daddy wanted to get involved in. There were no secrets kept from Daddy. Anything we told her had to be told to Daddy, <laughs> which didn't always suit myself and Lisa and Martin, but we had to get used to it. In the last four to five years, Mammy started developing dementia. It must have been very frustrating for her, but she kept trying to exercise her brain as much as possible. And she would do lots of crosswords and write everything down so she wouldn't forget. In the final weeks and months, her memory was nearly gone completely. But she still had a great sense of humour and she'd laugh if you cracked a joke. Up until she went into hospital last week, we'd get her to do a few basic sums, say her prayers and sing some children's songs. That, that gave her great satisfaction. We are so grateful to Daddy who was able to look after Mammy for the last few years at home, that we were able to bring her home from hospital in the last few days and be with her in her final hours. She would never want to be a burden on anyone, and you'd nearly think she picked a bank holiday weekend and a midterm break to go so that <laughs> everyone would be on holidays and not be put out too much. Thank you, Mammy, for being the best mother and friend in the world. Thanks for touching the hearts and minds of everyone you met. We'll miss you so much here on earth, but we know that you are gone to heaven and you will always be with us in spirit to help us along the way. Thank you. Thank you, Oliver, for those heartfelt words. It's, it's not just the mammy had the skill with the words, and very well, very well worded to put together. I invite you now to stand with me as we have our prayers of commendation. And so before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Bridie. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. of the Holy Spirit, as the incense rises to the heavens, our hope and trust in the bridge of two will rise to be for saving the Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. 
Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Bridget. In the sure and certain hope, that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and our sister Bridget forever. In peace now, let us take our sister to her place of rest. You always made there a, a lover left out two important, very important people there. Father Tom and Father Joe used to come to see her and give her great comfort. And also the singer and, and musician there. Joe, um, oh, I won't try to think. <laughs> My med, uh, memory's gone again. Thanks very much, everybody.